Hey guys and welcome to church online service. Before we go any further, we just want to take this opportunity to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We appreciate you and you mean the world to us and it's not just because of the amazing food we get to eat during this MCO. So as we head into praise and worship, don't forget to hit that love button to say your yes and amens and let's get ready for a powerful time. Say 
captive for the sick let there be Sarah.
more of you in our lives, so much more of you in our families, in our church, in every day of our lives. God, we say, help us see things not from our perspective, but even as we rely and press in on more of your Holy Spirit, that will fix our eyes on you, that our perspectives will change not look at things or circumstances around us, but we just 
fix our eyes on you, knowing God that you are the author and you are the perfecter of our faith. Yes. And you we put our trust in Jesus Christ alone, our cornerstone, our Prince of Peace, our Lord of all. Yeah. So God, we say, even as we listen to your word, you remind us again that your promises are yes and amen. That's right. That you'll never leave us or forsake us, God. In all things, we'll work together for the good of those who love you. So we thank you, Holy Spirit. We pray. Be with us in our going out and coming in. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Church, it's giving time. If you have your Bibles with you, do turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Uh, it says, We know that in all things God works for the good for those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Friends, um, just want to encourage all of us to not lose heart and to not lose hope during this time because every difficult circumstance and every challenges that we ever encounter, they are opportunities for us to experience God's grace and God's strength and opportunities for us to dive even deeper in our faith and trust in God. And the world may say otherwise, our current economic situation may say otherwise, or even our fear and anxieties may say otherwise. But today, let's tune into what God has to say about us and our situation. And that is that God will work out for good for those who love Him. So church, let's continue to give faithfully. Let's not give up in doing good. And I believe that God will see us through this time. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you so much that you are really our ultimate provider. We thank you that you are a God that is always aware of what's going on in our lives. Father, we pray that even as we give faithfully today, we pray that you help us to increase our faith and increase our trust in you. Help us with our disbelief and discouragement. Father, we pray that help us to not um, just tune into what our minds and negativities have to say about our situation, but God, help us to really rely on your word and rely on your promises that have, you have declared over our lives. So Father, we just uphold our giving into your hands today. We thank you so much for being the God that you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church giving will be via online and you can either pay via Maybank, Touch and Go and online transfer. dan dia di rumah just stay at home Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Hi Church, we thank God that we are able to meet in this manner. Though we may not be able to come together, but yet we are all still connected. I just want to take this opportunity to thank every one of you for your generosity and your faithfulness in giving of your tithes and your offering. For this past one month, we are able to support four pastors from other churches and also contributed to an effort to produce PPEs for the frontliners uh, in, in our country. So I just want to continue and encourage you guys to keep on you know, honouring the Lord in your tithes and offering and pray that we will be able to find more ways and means to be a greater blessing to the people around us. I pray that none of us will, will just be thinking of ourselves but we'll always be thinking of other people because I believe that this is a good opportunity for us to be able to make an impact in the lives of the people around us. Church, today is Mother's Day. I just want to wish all the mothers a happy Mother's Day. Though we may not be able to celebrate our Mother's Day how we used to in the past years, but we still want to honour all our mothers today. You know, mothers, you are truly our heroes in our lives. You know, we really appreciate every one of you and we just want to say that we love you. Your role in our lives is indescribable. Throughout this entire MCO, I have learned that having the responsibility to keep everything in the house in order is not easy. We salute you, mothers. You know, today I want to talk to every one of us about history's most famous mother. Her name was Mary, the mother of Jesus. Why not turn to someone next to you and tell that person, Mary, the mother of Jesus. We are going to learn from her life. You know, when every time when we talk about Mary, the mother of Jesus, it's often, you know, she's often being preached during Christmas. But today, I want all of us to understand that what she did sets a great example of sacrifice. In Luke chapter 1, verse 26, let me read to you Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favoured one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled. Everybody said troubled. And he's saying, and consider what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he will be great, and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. 
Now indeed Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived her son, uh, conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month of her for her who was called barren. For with God nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be made, let it be to me according to your word, and the angel departed from her. Friends, this was the account of the angel appearing to Mary and proclaiming to her that she was going to bear a son, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. She was given a task that none other had. She was to give birth to Jesus. And in verse 34, it tells us that it didn't make sense to her. She said to the angel, How can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. You know, friends, it was going to be a virgin birth. Of course, for all of us, we have the privilege to be able to, you know, to see the event unfold, but to her at that very moment and those that are around her at that time, this does not make sense at all. I believe that if she was to tell anybody, it would just sound, it, it would just sound crazy. There was no point of reference at all. If there was any examples that she would, you know, she would have quoted, but there was none. Her life was going to be turned upside down it was about to get crazy for her. Just imagine that Mary, at that very time, was preparing to get married to the man that she loved, Joseph. Instead of planning for a wedding, now she had to plan to be a mother. How about explaining it to Joseph? It was not going to be easy. I mean, how would Joseph going to take it? But Mary trusted God even if she couldn't understand how to explain to Joseph. She did not tell the angel, you know, hang on for us. I'm going to talk and discuss with my fiancé Joseph, see what he thinks, and then I'll come back and get back to you on this manner. But all she did was that she obeyed God. She told the angel, let it be done to me according to your word. She obeyed God. You know, when every time when we we talk about favor. We talk about blessings. We often think that, you know, everything is going to be good. Everything is going to be fine. But for Mary, she was ready for trouble. So this day, I want to ask you, can God trust you with trouble? If you can't handle trouble, you can't handle life. Mary, she went through the pregnancy. She gave birth in a barn. And she had to live a life as a fugitive. After she became a mother, for two years, she had to be on the run because her baby, Jesus, had a bounty on his head. Herod had decreed that all children below two years old to be killed. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 16, tells us that she had to be on the run. For her, being a mother was not a perfect picture. Even though she was to, to, to give birth to Jesus, the journey that she took was filled with trouble from the very time that, you know, the angel came and appeared to her and announced this trouble had begun. When the moment that she told Joseph, trouble had continued on. And by the time she, she gave birth in a barn, she, they couldn't even find a place for her to give birth, trouble continued on. And after she gave birth, her trouble didn't stop. She had to live a life of a fugitive for the next two years. Can you imagine this with me, friends? You know, it's not a, it's not a perfect picture. It's not a picture of easy. It was difficult. She did not have everything prepared for her in the natural. All she had was trouble. Turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, trouble. So can God trust you with trouble? Frustrations will come before favor. Burdens will come before blessings. Problems will come before a party. Friends, being favored doesn't mean that you are going to be shielded from troubles. We need to change our mindset if we think that favor will erase every trouble and every challenge in our lives. We can't have breakthroughs 
without first going through a breaking. You know, in James chapter 1, verse 2, the verse 3, it tells us this, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Can God trust you with trouble today? There are things that we can learn from Mary's life. If we look at her, she was a woman that stuck through from the beginning until the end. But she started off by fully submitted to God's will. She was completely in full submission to God's will. Mary never wavered from her complete submission to God's will. Was she nervous? Certainly. Was she unsure of her own abilities? Who wouldn't be? There was no one that she could turn to, to to look at them as an example of bearing the Son of God. Was she anxious about the prophecy? That part of her future would include pain? Of course. She was fully aware that when life happens, not all life is going to be pleasant. Pain is part of that promise. Pain is part of that life. But she was first of all completely committed to God. She was committed. She was not compartmentalized in her commitment to God. Her commitment was in all, not just a section or a certain part of her life, but she committed herself entirely to God. Secondly, she never relinquished her responsibility. She never gave up as a mother. She was a mother from the beginning and she was a mother at the end. She was there, the Bible tells us in John chapter 19, verse 25, that she was there by the cross when Jesus was crucified. Mothers never relinquish their responsibilities and title, even if the child is rebellious and disobedient because her heart would not allow her to do that. What more when she is called by God? When a woman becomes a mother, when a man becomes a father, there is an instant realisation that pain and hurts will most certainly come. But it is not a reason or excuse to quit. Mary, she was there at the very point where Jesus was hanging on the cross and she was still there being a mother to Jesus. She never gave up. She never threw in the towel when things get tough, but she stood true until the end. Mary had a chance to see God's plan the entire plan played out. We thank God for that. She suffered through the crucifixion. She celebrated the resurrection. And she also witnessed the powerful presentation of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 1 verse 14 tells us that Mary was one of those who were in the upper room. She was there when the Holy Spirit came upon the people. She held on and she experienced God. She experienced the Holy Spirit. What a gift from God to live long enough for parenting to make sense. You know, from the very beginning, it did not make sense to her. Raising Jesus did not make sense to her. Even at the foot of the cross, it didn't make sense to her. But we thank God that she lived long enough to see the unfolding plan of God for her life. Some parents live long enough to see God's plans for their children. Some even see God's working in the lives of their grandchildren. But the key is not to give up. You need to be tenacious. You need to keep on going. You need to keep pressing in. Don't give up when things are difficult. Don't give up when things don't happen the way that you imagine it to be. Was Mary perfect? I don't think so. A mother called by God does not have to be perfect. You know, children today, I want to say to you, your mom doesn't have to be perfect. Turn to your mother and tell your mother, you're not perfect, but I still love you. You know, I want to sh share something, you know, from a book, an excerpt from a book titled Gifted Hands. It tells of the account of Ben Carson's mother. Okay, I'm going to read to you. 
Dr. Benjamin Carson, a renowned surgeon at John Hopkins, tells a moving story about his mother. Mrs. Carson insisted that Ben and his brother Curtis write a book, report every couple of weeks. This wasn't for their school, it was not a school project. This was for their mom. Ben and Curtis, they dutifully obeyed. About the time he was in junior high, Ben finally realised something quite shocking. His mother couldn't read. For years, Ben had read books and scratched out reports, assuming that his mother was checking every word. But she didn't have a clue what he was writing or what he was saying. Now consider this. Raising by an illiterate mother, Ben grew up to be a world-famous surgeon who was featured in many articles and was, the, and was the author of many books. His illiterate mother, his illiterate mother didn't twist her hands over her lack of learning and give up hope of raising intelligent boys. Instead, she gave her boys what she had, interest, accountability, and the courage to demand extra work. Ben's mother, Dr. Benjamin Carson's mother, wanted the best for her children. Even though she did not have everything going for her, she couldn't read, but she wanted her children to be well-read. Friends, mothers may not be perfect, but they can want the best for their children. Mary was a tenacious woman. She was not a quitter. She stuck true and she wrote it out. Even trouble was awaiting her from the very beginning, throughout her entire life, she stuck true and she saw the unfolding plan of God for her life. You may be facing some heartaches because of your children. Never give up. You may have trouble surrounding you. Never give up. Your promises may still be out of sight. Never give up. Mary didn't give up. She started with trouble, she never gave up. I want to encourage us that I believe that God is asking the same question to every one of us. If we want the favour and the blessing of God, we need to ask ourselves, are we ready for trouble in our life? Can God trust us with trouble? I want to read to you again James chapter 1, verse 2 to verse 3. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Troubles are not the end of stories for our lives. In fact, they are ingredients to write stories in our lives. I want to encourage every one of us, do not back down because of troubles that we face. Do not give up because of troubles that we face. You may have troubles with your children, don't give up. You may have troubles in your businesses, don't give up. You may have troubles in your relationship, don't give up. You may have troubles in your finances, don't give up. You may have troubles in your work. Don't give up. The key is not to give up. Can God trust us with troubles? I pray that every one of us will be ready for the challenges, the troubles that are ahead of us. Because at the end of it all, we're going to see the unfolding plan of God for our lives. If we're going to stick true until the very end. So friends, why not today? Let us look to God instead of setting our eyes on the troubles around us, let us set our eyes on God and to believe and to hold on to Him just as how Mary held on to, Je held on to God. Just like Mary who held on to God, she saw the unfolding plan of God for her life. I pray that God would do the same for you and I as we continue to hold on to Him. Never give up. Why not let's pray together. Father, we thank You for Your Word that when troubles come, it is, an, it is an opportunity for us to grow. Father, help us not to back down. Help us not to give up. Lord, even at times where it feels difficult and painful, Lord, we want to stick true. We want to ride it out. 
because we know that at the end of it all, we're going to see you unfolding your plans for our lives. So Lord, we trust in you. Lord, we pray that no matter what we are going through, what troubles we may be in right now, thank you that your hands are never too short to reach out to us. Thank you, Lord, that your plans are always perfect. Though we may not be perfect, but your plans are always perfect. Lord, we pray, be with us, strengthen us. We thank you. We commit our lives to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone say, Amen. Why not turn to your neighbour, ask your neighbour, can God trust you with trouble? Thank you so much guys for tuning in. Do remember to stay connected with us on social media. And if you've missed any of the previous sermons, don't worry, we've got you covered. So a quick reminder, prayer meeting is on every Wednesday at 9pm. And don't rush off after service, hang out with us in the Zoom foyer. Or if you need prayer, you can head over to the prayer rooms. Till next week guys, stay at home, stay safe.